the non-financial use case of cryptocurrency or non-financial use case of cryptographic or blockchain, um, it's just so undervalued, especially if you look into the social aspects, no matter social network or social impact, it's still largely undervalued. It seems to me that people don't really want to create another profile or like another social media profile. We found a utopia, but you know, to go there, you need to abandon what you did for the, you know, the past of your life and abandon everything and, you know, leave your grandma and your college friend there right. and just let's go to the utopia. <laughs> Don't bring them. We need to fund other ones systematically. We need to grant and invest and donate systematically and let the younger generation figure out this missing part. We mm. need to build a censorship resistant uh, social network. We need to be more of a man. That's, that's what we're mm. trying to do. The very reason this decentralized uh, industry exists is we need to establish independent cyberspace. Hello, everyone. You are listening to the Blockchain Socialist Podcast. I'm Josh. And for today's interview, I'm speaking to Suji Yan, who is the CEO and founder of Mask Network. Uh, Mask Network is a really interesting kind of a protocol. One of the main kind of products that at least that I've been using for a little bit um, that I find really interesting is it's a browser extension that overlays on top of sites like Twitter or Facebook, other different kinds of Web2 platforms that give additional information and provide kind of like new features that connect you from your Web2 profile to different Web3 uh, features and applications that you would normally be able to use in the crypto world while still keeping this uh, the social dimension or like the same overlay and features that Web2 platforms already give you. But so we'll talk more about that um, and what that means. But to start off, maybe Suji, if you want to explain a bit of who you are um, and maybe talk a bit about, um, yeah, where you're coming from and how you came about with Mass. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. And the audience of Blockchain Socialists and Suji in here, founder and CEO of Mass Network. I jumped in crypto around like 2015, 2016, when I was like a student, like a freshman sophomore student of like the, the, the US for my uh, undergrad study. And before that, I was actually a journalist. I was an independent journalist. I still writing a lot about like how I view um, the internet relationship between internet and sovereign state. Um, I wrote a lot about like political stuff and, and, and geopolitics. And then eventually I uh, become very interested in crypto. I also got background in, again, I got background in computer engineering. I studied my undergrad in state. <clears throat> I figured out like, okay, crypto is very interesting. Bitcoin is very interesting. I was born in Shanghai. I was born in origin from Shanghai. And as, as some of uh, the crypto OG or East OG might know that Ethereum have its early days in Shanghai that uh, in, the, in, the, in the beer market of 2014, 2015, uh, the EF almost ran out of money and they start to raise try to raise you know try to try to try to like ogs from the east they start to raise in shanghai and there are several uh, early investor institutional early investor um, bought ethereum um token around one dollar and i was related and close to this group of people and figure out oh my god ethereum is also very interesting you start you can start to write something on top of blockchain and make it like a law right and make it immutable and what if we can do other things you know, other than financial activities. Um, and I start to dig in this area more and more. And in 20, in late 2016, 2017, I just, you know, decided to drop off from my college. I was 21. Um, start to doing something on top of the decentralized web, and which I believe in the replace, somehow replace the internet or, or, or be on the internet. Um, and, and I want to do something about social network or like consumer network or like say non-financial use case of crypto. Um, and that's why I started mass network. Um, and in 2021, we are lucky that we launched our token and went really well in 2021 market. It went up to like 2.8 billion and it was definitely, a, it's a bubble. And, uh, we also, you know, we are just <laughs> like, 
relatively um, we are like more uh, optimistic in long term, but less optimistic in short term. So mm-hmm. we, we we just told our shareholders and investor like, oh, if you want to cash out, it's fine. But we want you guys to stay to help the younger generation to help this industry. And uh, most of our, our like uh, early investor, they stay and become a uh, long term partner of us. And we start to start our own venture arm. That um, now is like quite common. Like every major chain is doing their own venture arm. But as um, decentralized social network DAO, it's still quite uncommon. We start our venture arm now is over a hundred million AUM. And we do grants, we do donations, we definitely do more, uh, also do more uh, investing, incubating, uh, and invest and help the other projects. But overall, I think the the non-financial mm-hmm. use case of cryptocurrency or non-financial use case of cryptographic or blockchain, um, it's just so undervalued, especially if you look into the uh, in the social aspects, no matter social network or social impact, it's still largely undervalued. So that's our story. We started in, I got ID in 2015 and then drop out, uh, 2017 start, you know, mm-hmm. doing this thing as a full time project. And we were lucky then, uh, we got a lot of return from the market. We also here to stay and build many things. Yeah. Nice. It's really interesting. Um, so just to like maybe clarify for people, because oftentimes when people talk about decentralized social and when they're working in that area, they are trying to put forth like, I don't know, with, with Farcaster and Lens, like its own protocol itself. Um, like they say that they're not a platform, but there are certain elements that are platform-like, I think, to a lot of these um, uh, types of projects. But is So Mask itself, Mask Network, is not its own like social protocol in the same way like Lens or Farcaster are. It's Like put uh, it this different. way... Um, so if, you know, just, just imagine what if, like, what if one day Elon just wake up and say, hey, Twitter going to be decentralized, you know, what, you're going to have, you're going to have the resolve, you're going to have mm-hmm. money to have the best engineer, right? Just, just say he wake up and, and, and when, when we start this thing, it's not Elon, it's Jack and he already wake up, he already woke up with the Bitcoin dream. So let's say he wake up one day and then Zuckerberg wake up one day with like Instagram and Threads. Right, already have threads, and and back in our days when we started in 2016, there was no threads, there was no attempt of Instagram doing decentralization or Twitter or Facebook, but but they already somehow suddenly wake up and just say one day they wake up early, and they have all different decentralized or relatively centralized protocols there, threads using Matstown Activity Pack and Twitter, I don't know what's going to use right, uh, Blue Sky maybe Noster maybe, and then there's like blockchain like. Silicon Valley people using um, Forecaster and Lens, um, like more creator economy and, and European people and Asian people, maybe it will be a disaster because <laughs> like, how can you communicate between those guys, <laughs> those protocols? It, are, you, are you actually making it worse? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's actually making it worse, um, but it doesn't mean we should not do that. That mm-hmm. it means like someone should be able to um, connect that as a meta layer of the networks and, 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 and create a bridge between the web two and web three, or no, no matter like web four or web five. And when we start this thing, um, mm. we figure out that we need to create this bridge. And otherwise most of people just stack their data, stack there, you know, not, not only their data, your, your grandma and your grandpa, and your friends, your college friends, your normie friends are going to stack in the web two network. Are you going to just leave or do what? Are you going to just pay them $5 for an account? Um, I think it's a lot of problem to solve. We didn't expect that, you know, uh, there will be Lance or Forecaster when we start in 2016, but we saw their stimmit. There, there was stimmit like created by BM, the same CEO of the same creator of EOS. And he was a, he was a, you know, OG figure back in time. We know there's other attempts. Uh, we know there's activity path. Activity path is now it's part of the standard of Tim Berners-Lee's like uh, World Wide Web Consortium. And the largest, the largest, like at that time, the largest app that using uh, Activity Pub was Matstown uh, around 20, 2016. And we saw there's different protocols. And then we figured out, oh my God, the problem need to be solved. And we need to create an over top layer um, on top of different things. Think about this way like, um, 
a, a smart a smartphone system like Web 2.0, like mobile internet or, or or interactive internet that create that bring us the mobile phone, the smartphones, iPhones, and Androids, and these things extract away carriers and ISPs. And different kind of like three letter, four letter things you can, you don't want to let the users learn. You know, they don't need to learn what is modem, what is ISP. They just need to use something on top. And there's something on top can communicate between those phones. Like no matter it's a Google phone, Samsung phone or iOS phone. But, but, but that's, that's something smart that time, right? You connect people and you don't lock in people, um, because they use AT&T. Uh, but unfortunately, that created more world garden uh, than we expected 10 years ago. When, when we saw the iPhone thing, we like, oh, my God, this is going <laughs> to crack down the world garden of uh, cell phone carrier. No, it created more world garden. Um, so when I started the, the mass network, I want to I want to create something that able to communicate between between Instagram, Twitter or over the top of Twitter or of Instagram or Facebook of like WeChat of Line and, and, and ends up we, we start trying from Twitter because um, because the, uh, the, the the crypto community or the nerdy community was on, on, on Twitter and also because that Jack was the mm. was quite supportive not only like our idea, ideas but like the general ideology of decentralization um, but as today mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we still view like Mask is um, a missing piece, a missing part of the puzzle that um, we love to. Yeah, we, 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 we definitely love to. We're trying to do our own social graph, social protocol. Uh, but when we do that, we've tried to make sure that we align and able to bridge to all the other platforms as long as they have um, an endpoint, they have an API, they have a Web3 like open, open DAO, we've been able to bridge them together. Uh, if they're super close ended like we chat today, we might have no idea how we are gonna work. But our idea is try to connect everything and create a master and meta networks of people. So that's the, the goal of mass network. Mm-hmm. You know, like put a mask on everything. So you're gonna look the same under the mask. Um yeah, so that's our idea. Yeah. Um so it is. It is a, a social network, but it's also different that we try to connect different things. We try to mask Twitter, whatever. On top of it, we try to create a different layer. Yeah. Right. No, I, th- I think generally, I think this approach is interesting just since kind of like one of my doubts about a lot of kind of like these new social media attempts, although I am like supportive of wanting to create different types of social media platforms or just like having something different besides the mess that is like Twitter and the rest of these web two platforms. Um, like the, the difficulty that I have is that like, it seems to me that people don't really want to create another profile or like another social media profile. Um, that's kind of like a lot of what I've, I gather from at least a lot of like my friends, you know, especially ones who are not into crypto. If I, mention, you know, another social media platform that's like kind of interesting. The difficult part is, which with all of these kind of like suffer from is like getting, getting people to create that's, new profiles. That's and a lot basically of people, saying think, like, little... you know, like in my opinion, that's basically saying, oh, we found a utopia, but in order to, in order to just, you know, in order to go there, you need to abandon what you did for the, you know, the past of your life and abandon everything and, you know, it's, leave your grandma and your college friend there right. and just let's go to the utopia. <laughs> Don't bring them. And, and right. there's no one offered a solution that, Oh, you know, like it's not really hundred percent utopia, but connect to some utopia, right. but somehow there's a way you can pack them and mask is the way that packs them. And then there's, there's problem that, you know, if, if somehow we just end up landing for caster, you know, it's cool, but it's, it's Ethereum. I'm a big Ethereum fan. I love, love EVM. But like, what if that guy really wants Solana or Tom? I mean, what if, you know, and, and there's no way to say, Hey dude, we can actually pack you back to Solana. <laughs> there's no, no one doing that. Um, we didn't finish the whole roadmap, but we are just trying to bridge everything as we can. And over the years we realized mm-hmm. this is not a prop. This is not, uh, this is not possible with just one single project. We need to fund other ones systematically. 
we need to grant and invest and donate systematically and let the younger generation figure out this missing part. But we are just building a master plan that you know people can people can create different piece of it and then connect them together. It's always about that. Um, so that's the painful thing uh, mm-hmm. when we ask me around decentralized social network. It's doing better, way better than we expect in 2016. In 2016, there's only Stimit and Mastom on activity path. And over the years, we we are lucky mm-hmm. that we are financially very successful. We become one of the major donor of Mastom, and and then we are you know again we are doing all these investment and public good things. Uh, but we also frustrated to see it's become very siloed. The decentralized social network become very siloed. If I'm on Noster, how can I talk to someone <laughs> on Ethereum? Right. That's, yeah, that's, um, right. that's, that's our feeling. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's the, what you're pointing to is the irony of creating like, you know, decentralized social, but you know, you're still trapped within a certain protocol that has, like, it's still different than a Web2 platform for sure. Um, and it has a certain amount of openness, but it is also like, how does Farcaster talk to Blue Sky, talk to Noster or whatever else? We're all of a sudden just recreating the same mm. problem again and fracturing more mm. in that process. Um, which is why I do think, I mean, the Mask Network's uh, approach is quite. It, is, is much more is more interesting. Um, I imagine it is just like <laughs> I mean a shit ton it of is. work <laughs> trying to create the the standards to allow these yes. different protocols. So we to we talk to we, we have to, and it's many years of work. And now now like uh, mass the, the the main pro the, the main product is the extension right on the, on the on the OG side because the young generation people definitely like like me like my generation definitely use more mobile phone, but for crypto traders and OG mm. PGP lever and cryptographic lever, they will use uh, desktop. So yeah, mask have its extension is doing well. And, you know, we have some OG that really love us. They use our wallet to, or, or, or our infra to store uh, or, or custody a lot of money, self custody a lot of money and do that, you know, every day tipping on, on Twitter, red pocket on Twitter, swap trading on Twitter. But on the other side, we have different mm. um, entities creating different new projects under under the mask style. Uh, we have the Firefly, Firefly.social, which is mm. an all you can one social app uh, trying to solve some of the problem. Like what if I have all these accounts? What if I want to use my Twitter to to deal with my forecast or Lens or Blue Sky or Naster? So it's already like all in one. Uh, you can use your Twitter yeah. to log in and it's like, you know, compatible. You can do cross posting. And then we are lucky to have Vitalik as one yeah. of the. Uh, I think he's a DAU now. Yeah, he's a he's a active DAU, and a lot of his posts on mm-hmm. um, Forecaster is using uh, Firefly. Um, and on the other side, we're trying to uh, create an aggregating DID protocol. And, and again, it's the same problem. Like, oh, I have ENS, and you have like the Solana thing, or whatever you have the Reddit, and you have the GitHub, and there's other people who have linking. You know, super professional people they only use linking. How can we aggregate your IDs? There was some attempt from Keybase. If you remember the Keybase around 2014, 2015, mm-hmm. um, that there's an attempt to aggregating all these things in a centralized way on Keybase. But we are, um, you know, we are more open-minded. We want to make it like a protocol. So we spin off the next ID, still under mask. Uh, we haven't raised any money. still like uh, 100% open source for free protocol right now. Uh, you can check out uh, West3.bio uh, West yeah. or Nexon ID because there's so many DID. You know, in, in the boom market, there's like 10, 20 different projects doing DID. Again, it, yeah. it make it worse than email, you know, because even, even the Google email, the Gmail and the Microsoft one, Hotmail, they can talk to each other. But how, how our DID touch each other? So we have to aggregate them. Um, then, then we saw there's so many like, Fox um, and you know entrepreneurs and young engineers they need help during the the beer market um, because the VC just leave and they just disappear they went to AI or something and I was from AI I was mm-hmm. doing I was doing autonomous car as my first job mm-hmm. I was doing AI a lot computer vision stuff 
So yeah, I'm f- it's fine. I, I love all these innovations. I, I personally have some, you know, have some angel investing in this area. But um, I just feel like someone should stay and and using both nonprofit and for profit ways. Now we we have a nonprofit. We have DAO. So if you want to do something, write us a grant. Write us grant a proposal. Maybe we're gonna give you a grant. There's you know independent works and there's uh, teams that look look into those uh, proposals. Uh, we have granted over a few million dollars worth of token in mainly in mass core Ethereum. Um, and then when you when you just you know realize this this not, might not be a, a public project, maybe this is going to be a, a new commercial project. You launch a project, launch a company, launch a token. You want to raise money. Uh, we have our venture vehicle that that we can invest in the thing, and there's a separate team running the venture vehicle. But again, the largest holder of the venture vehicle. Um, you know, by law is a nonprofit. For now, we have to make it like separate Cayman entity, BV entity, because because <laughs> the American uh, uh, compliance, American, uh, I think like punch down of crypto. But eventually, it's going to be like some endowment fund mm-hmm. invest in nonprofit invest in the for profit entity, and then we're going to able to have the cash flow, keep doing this like donations. And over the years, we also realized there's so many like non Web3, non token, non crypto innovation are super important to um, this community. Just people just, you know, ignore them. Um, mm-hmm. For example, like Matstown, it is not crypto social network and they probably don't like cryptocurrency, but um, it's a lot of like important things happen there. You know, even <laughs> it's sad to say, but even like even Donald Trump yeah. is using that, right? So uh, using the fork of Madstone, and <laughs> um, so we 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 donate to the Madstone yeah. new foundations. Not really a super big donor, but I think we are we're one of the yeah, yeah. one of the few um, long term institutional big donor. We did we did the uh, largest one time donation to them, but we we're probably going to do more to other nonprofit. Mm. Um, the same thing applies for. Uh, journalism, you know, because one of the reasons Twitter take off is journalism, journalist. That's become the the, the 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 really the really source of news, right? No matter during the COVID, during the war, yeah. during uh, a revolution, right? That's what happened, and and, and we saw the the original Twitter team. Uh, no matter, no matter, like before Jack or after Jack come back or before Elon. Uh, even right now, even with Elon right now, they already they, they are still spending a lot of effort try to keep the content at it as it is, right? Uh, it's definitely not getting mm. better. It's probably getting worse, but it's a lot of effort. And you see the the value of journalism, no matter they don't want to like them or not. So we are donating to the J School. Uh, there there's not too much people donating to J School these days. Uh, we just announce uh mm-hmm. we're probably gonna announce uh, a partnership with UK, uc berkeley uh j school and there's many other things we want to do as a long-term mm-hmm. donation because that's the people who wouldn't going to use the social network if you're building a decentralized social media social network and those most censored people are the journalists and activists if they don't even use it okay what's the point you know, like let your crypto friend trade something. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, we we don't we we we, we didn't figure out the, the the ultimate you know secret sauce of success, but we just long term and here to you know figure out the different parts and try to put them together. And if we fail, we just donate to other people and invest in other folks. They might be able to you know we hands over this part. Okay, we we're we're not so professional. We're not really so smart on this part. Can do that. Um, so that's that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I think the one of the things that does pull me back to Twitter, like fortunately or unfortunately, um, is the fact that that is like still the main place that I find where like mm. breaking news mm-hmm. is is found or like the just like the most up to date thing. Um, of course, there's a lot of caveats. There's a lot of like you know, it's a prime place where people like. Uh, put fake news or whatever else, but it's also one where um, also a lot of true things or just like direct kind of journalism mm-hmm. is is there. Um, and which I think a lot of the decentralized social networks don't really mm-hmm. have yet, which I think is interesting. But this, um, back to the DIDs, I don't remember if you mentioned it, but 
next idea is the is the protocol that you guys are yes have, have yes it's one of our correct? sub entity that we create uh, yes. basically a uh, identity uh, aggregation page for or your web two web three web five identities like you can connect your uh, github <laughs> linking like github facebook uh, twitter uh, ethereum solana forecaster lens mm, not certain in coming mm-hmm. soon like no matter which chain you prefer which social network prefer you can ag- aggregate them together so the ultimate goal and one of the goal is like uh, we are one of the goal we are already testing on our Firefly app because Firefly is our flagship mobile app and we is aggregating social contents uh, one thing we're testing with next ID mm-hmm. team is our internal team within the mask we're testing that is if I follow you or I follow the blockchain socialist account on Twitter, I may be able to automatically follow you on whatever other social platform you want to use, you know, because you have mm. the identities, your own identities, and then, Great, then the follow relationship should be mapping to these networks. Just like if I email you, it's actually email to like Gmail or Google, and then can forward this thing within their servers. And that's uh, the thing we want to achieve for, for the, the master plan. Yeah, but um, you can try. Um, I think our audience, you know, your audience can love to have a try. Uh, West three dot bio can search Vitalik dot ETH or search Suji and dot ETH. Yeah, <laughs> um, you're gonna see my uh, GitHub Keybase Reddit. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Interesting. That's yeah. I think that's that's the ultimately like the the reality of wanting to fix this kind of fragmentation is like the hard work of kind of synthesizing all of these different profiles and platforms, um, which just forms as a way to, yeah, like bring, it, it's almost like, you know, like the, this kind of very common critique about big tech platforms that they are like walled gardens or they're like, um, there's a lot of like platform risk, especially for creators, like, especially for me, like I know, like I have my largest following on Twitter. If I lose my Twitter account, that's like really annoying for me because then I have to rebuild Mm. an audience, uh, you know, in other platforms, other places or whatever, or I have to make a new account or something. And that's like, um, you know, I lose, I lose all that amount of, uh, Mm -hmm. clout work Mm -hmm. that I've been doing (laughs) over the years. Um, so yeah, so like having this way so that, you know, it doesn't really matter which platform I am like that I'm in and the potential, like someone who likes my, likes my podcast or writing may be on that they can still follow me in mm. whatever way is like um, their preferred method. So I'm definitely, I'm a big fan of like aggregating these things just because it's so annoying having to post the same thing on like every platform. Yeah, you should try um, Firefly. Yeah. You're which gonna of love, course I have to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but one of the things I think is interesting I wanted to point out is that this is like a very interesting way of like hacking, mm-hmm. I guess, um, which has a lot of like potential consequences I, like on mm-hmm, web to mm-hmm, social mm-hmm. media platforms, I think it, it, it applies a lot of interesting pressure. It's like a type of, um, I mean, I guess it's like market-based pressure because I mean, in the sense that states, we, there is no like international standard for every social media platform to follow for like data for, mm-hmm, for posting, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. liking or whatever else. There is no, there really is no pressure on states, uh, on platforms from the state. Um, but by creating this, uh, uh, this overlay, um, and you know, of just like standardizing all these things or co- aggregating them all together, it does apply. I imagine like quite some pressure to, uh, to, th- to yeah. the social media platforms, um, which to me is like the, the essence of hacking is like kind of pressuring these kind of like large income. Yeah. We did many like cool hacking things, not really say hacking, but like tricky way and, and, and it worked very well back in the days and uh, re- recently there's many uh, similar attempts right back in the days when uh, around 2019 2020 we launched uh, the first mass version in 2019 uh, well yeah coincidentally it's like July the 4th yeah, so <laughs> it's the Independence Day and, and I'm, a, I'm mm. a big believer of the uh, of the Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace if, if, if you, if you remember that it's not from the mm-hmm. EFF founder, I'm a big believer mm-hmm. of that, of that, uh, declarations. So we launched, um, it's also like by accident and we launched on dry the force. 
Um, and 2020 was also our lucky year that we <laughs> able to onboard many cool guys like Vitalik and Michal, who's also Michal is also co-founder of Ethereum. Uh, he, he was donating us on Gitcoin. Mm. And then there's other like MakerDAO. That time was before, again, before DeFi summer. So MakerDAO only had 5,000 users of DAI, 5,000 globally of the DAI token, DAI stable coin on, 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 on the whole internet. And we just doing the red, red pocket campaign. It was really uh, amazing growth because people just love to like, not only Chinese people, not only Asian, like all, all, all people would love to have like little jobs, like air jobs, whatever. And they're just going to say, Hey, what, what's going on with maker account? They have the red pocket. Oh, Vitalik's tweeting. Great. Oh, some, some free money. And we are embedding in, in Twitter. And we also using the UI UX rendering in Twitter. So make sure it's not a scam. It's, it's not a fake because you can verify this is a cryptographic key signed by Metallic or signed by uh, some OGs, right? It's like a blink today. It's like the blink of Solana. Uh, they also try to over top of Twitter, but it's only on Solana. Uh, but it's also like the frame on Facaster. Um, but again, Facaster's frame is only on, only within the Facaster and webcast on, on like apps. Um, but we are trying to be more open at whatever chain. Uh, that time people still use EVM layer one. You can just, whatever stable coin can just tip other friends. It's one viral. And then we launched the uh, swappy on, on, on Twitter, uh, partner with, you know, uh, using Uniswap. And that was like before the, I think before Uniswap launches token, and that was the perfect timing for, for people trying out. And then Zap, I think, um, OG trader going to use it, but, but like, you know, uh, retail trader, they don't use it because they just, you know, still prefer to exchange, use exchange $10, no gas fee, but a lot of people love it. And we, we, we then mm-hmm. launch our own token on Twitter. Um, you know, we call it initial trade offering. <laughs> I do think a lot of, I mean, uh, I, I can't disclose, but I know a lot of people in Twitter actually are aware of that. Um, I'm quite surprised in that time in, in, in time before Elon that how Twitter is open-minded or maybe they just don't have any management, <laughs> you know, I, I have no idea. They just think, oh, <laughs> enough for Twitter offering. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> and and we, we launched the initial Twitter offering on Twitter, <laughs> not really on Twitter. It's over top of Twitter. It has nothing to do with Twitter, the company or right. Twitter platform, but it has things to do with the, the people we are using Twitter. So it's over top of uh, Web two, just like Web two is over top of Web one or or mobile phone carrier or like ISPs, um, and we're able to achieve the largest. I, I think like the, the the moment we did ITO, able to like you know run like pre- press the the Ethereum blockchain efficiency and and capacity, make it like the the, the, the highest gas fee ever witnessed in the Ethereum history. Before the NFT hype, we were able to achieve like mm. 4,000 GUA. Uh, right now it's one GUA. That time was like 4,300 nice. GUA for yeah. ITO. People just love it. And also we proved that, you know, <laughs> social network is larger than financial network. Because that time, you know, if you spend a lot of gas fee, you can still do things on Ethereum. You say, hey, I'm, I'm really rich. I want to deposit money on, on DeFi. You spend some gas fee, you can still do that. But if we monetize people on social network, boom, it's going to jam. You know, instantly it's going to jam. And that's the power of social network because people have mouse. Yeah. Now, more people have mouse than more people have bank account. <laughs> and that's that's going to stay true for many centuries. <laughs> um, and and we, we proved that it's going to work and then we launched the mass token. Um, and now we saw the, the blinks and, and, and um, frames. And that's really cool ideas. I think we should you know, support them. Um, but we don't want to see it to be platform locking or, or, or chain locking. I think there's no reason mm-hmm. to have it like as a chain locking system. Um, so we are we're backing uh, David Frame, uh, David Ferron. He's doing the Open Frame. We we'll become an investor and helping them. I think he's doing great things with Open Standard or Frame. Um, and and there's no one solving the problem not Blink on mobile, right? Because Blink is say, hey, we inject some code base in the Twitter page on uh, Chrome extension. But what if uh, you want to just, you know, tip someone on a mobile phone Twitter? You cannot do that. But we managed to do that through Filefly. And that in the next version, this version, you already can tip anyone. Next version, well, no matter it's Blink or Fran, 
no matter it's on Twitter, then Forecaster, you're able to use that. Um, eventually, you can own your social graph. So that's uh, our strategy. We have different main mm. things. I think one thing we learn, like one, one project we learn a lot is like Gnosis. Um, Gnosis is doing great. They have the Gnosis save and they have the cow swap. Uh, yeah, we might learn more strategy from them, uh, but we want to do like, oh, more about the social network, more about people using social things. Yeah. And that's our goals. And mm -hmm. also more actively grinding and investing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I remember, yeah, you were, we were, we were speaking before we started and, uh, about how, um, what did you say again? Like, like, um, you know, banks have existed for a very long time. Uh, and there's like already this playbook on how to create a bank or like how to, you know, how to run a bank, but there isn't so much, there is no clear cut, um, you know, protocol for how to run a, you know, broadly a social network, whether that, or some sort of mm -hmm. social group, that's a much more wider, oh, it's a wider range or spectrum of different types of behaviors or actions that you can take. Um, that aren't necessarily like in a bank, you could say like, we're making profits. Good. You know, we're doing our, our job as a bank, but if you are a political party or some sort of group or like some sort of community, maybe that's not your, that's not the main logic for how you run your community or group. Maybe it's, it's probably, so I would hope it's something else like with your friends, you're probably not all thinking about how do we all make profits, but it's like, you know, I don't know how to have fun with each other. Um, so it's a very different spectrum of, uh, behaviors to to, um, to yeah. understand, I guess. I also feel like you know, if if our industry only stuck with the the financial revolution, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be boring. It's gonna be like um, mm. then then I would just say like Bitcoin this year is overhyped. If we only have financial innovations, and over the past year we've been doing financial innovations, like how the Bitcoin replaced the gold, digital gold, you know, like ETFs. How ECM uh, plays, you know, mm. become the, the the best thing for your business to do a contract. Um, but we should not just only do um, business contract. We should create social contract, right? And then social contract create governance and and, and government and the the people, and they also bond the people and the state. That is the social contract, right? If Ethereum is using or like smart contract and other things are using for social contract. What is the way, what is place you can discuss that? You can modify that on Twitter. Uh, but again, like Twitter is centralized and you are discussing a centralized place about like your election. Now it's not going to be fun, right? And and I think it's time that we need something like this. And it's also time to accept that we need to have um, a place to connect everyone. You know, you don't, you don't want to have different like small bars and say, Hey, we are the forecaster people. We are, you know, creating our own social network, but just join our bar, pay five dollar at the front. Um, we should have like a public forum. Mm. Uh, yeah. And also that public forum should be able to connect everyone. Mm. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, it's definitely much more harder. And, and that's why we have to create different vehicles yeah. for different parts of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think this is, I mean, to your earlier point, you know, finance, I would argue is kind of like one very, very specific, you know, spectrum or set of behaviors that falls under like sociality, mm. like being social, you know, speculation is be we are interacting with other humans. We're being social, but in a very particular way with a very particular logic. Um, so everything is always social. It's just when we're only doing finance, then we're only like it's a very, very narrow set of of behaviors that we're, that we're looking at. That's true. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on, you know, thinking about the rise of decentral social media protocols, like what kinds of, I don't know, new types of applications, uh, or behaviors do you think would be, you can imagine being built, um, with, with the rise, with this rise of, of decentralized social media. I think there's still like not enough educations of how to use it, right? Because like again, decentralized mm. come with response, like come with freedom, but also responsibility and liabilities, right? Um, you might just like a wallet, self custody wallet, you might just lose your account, and decentralized social network, you might just lose your key. And there's definitely people trying to 
great like tools of recovery, but the current the current way of designing is actually uh, contradicting with many uh, many laws like uh, CCPA or GDPR. Like, oh shit, my things are on chain. How can I delete it? Right, mm. and then um, mm. it's okay right now. We ignore them. It's okay right now. That we ask like your early staff to ignore <laughs> them, but. But but there's a chart. There's a chart recently saw on the Twitter and there's other like Asian Asian internet. I saw there's a chart about social like top ten social network by the amount of users. Um, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, probably Instagram uh, close to TikTok and Telegram, WeChat, WeChat, Telegram, Line, uh, Kakao, Line, Korea and Japan, and Weibo, which is also in China, and, and Quest also in China. Um, if you look into the numbers, if you look into the, the valuations and, and stock market, because uh, a lot of them are um, are listed, right? A lot of them are listed. If you look into that, you figure out like the Weibo on um, New York Stock Exchange or Nasdaq, they're probably only like two billion, one billion ish. And now, like the venture capital is, is venture capital is is valuing the decentralized social network, no matter in the in the liquid market or or VC market, valuing them as pretty high valuations. Even though the user number is quite small, this is okay mm. as long as someone willing to pay the money. It's okay, but yeah. but as as we are catching <laughs> up in in the, in the valuations, as we are catching up in the valuations, we're not catching up in the user numbers. Uh, we're also not catching up telling them their liabilities and telling them, okay, this is not you know this is not pro- uh, not possible to comply with GDPR, and 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 we might need to work around. Mm. We might need to. Uh, have a movement tell people if I all my data I, I, I you know purposely put that on chain um, I cannot delete it right there's many things we need to do I think there's not enough uh, preparation for that and um, a lot of lot of those side projects are 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 really centralized like you know um, and 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 that's again I think that's not going to win in the long term yeah. And a lot of these like projects mm. are also like super certain chain maxi, not sure, you know, like if you ever mentioned to a Nostr guy, mm. they, oh, we're going to support uh, Ethereum EVM tipping on Nostr, they're going to just, you know, mad. Yeah. But again, <laughs> if you tell the forecaster, say guys like, oh, what if I want to yeah. do Lightning Network? They're going to, they're going to yell at you for whatever reason. But I mean, again, if you ever try Lightning Network, the, 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 the the address is like email, right? Address is like email, like a at b dot com. Hmm. Um, it might compatible with MPC wallet. It might compatible with a not really a wallet, but you might make find a ways to do it. And then there's nothing to stop you um, to do that. And then again, there's there's Russian R- Russian immigrants using Telegram, right? And there's always like Southeast Asian, Middle East people, and Chinese people, like even Korean people. A lot of people use Telegram, and they have their own chain Tom. The the chain might be still like centralized, and by the way, we are investor of Tom, and I, we are just trying to support them, no matter the chain is centralized or not, because it's just like two three year old. We we need to give them some time. Um, but everyone was talking about like, oh, we mm. need to build a censorship resistant uh, social network. In a way, like Telegram is censorship resistant, right? Because no matter they're they're not really by default end to end encrypted, but like they found the door of um. At least in certain scenario, they prove that they don't want to collaborate with corrupted government to delete the activist. They prove several times, and 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 there's something they're doing. There's something Chen they're doing. There's some like boss they're doing. But again, in 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 the crypto decentralized social network, uh, gangs of people they don't they don't bother to say, hey, what if we want to integrate Telegram? No, they don't do that for some reason I cannot understand. Maybe mm-hmm. because if they do that, people are gonna you know lower the valuation because it's become part of the Taiwan ecosystem. <laughs> so, but I think we need to be realistic, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's that's a, a long term struggle we need to face, and and we 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 better not to pick a side too early. You know, there's only one side to pick: whether you're supporting censorship or whether you're supporting centralization. If you support decentralized, uh, censorship resistant, if you support free speech, you should be able to stand with every protocol that trying to do that and learn the best and tell them not to do the maxi thing. That's our stand. 
Um, and, and in order to do that, we, we are trying to stretch, structure our um, entity into many different vehicles, into nonprofit and for profit and develop team, venture team, um, donating team, grant team. Yeah. The long term, I think it's a long term theme. Mm. Um, the first, the first stable coin idea, like the first crypto backing stable coin idea, like non, 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 like fiat backing stable coin idea was not on Ethereum. It is on uh, BitShare. If if you remember, that was like many years ago. There's mm. even BitCYN, like someone had big balls to do the uh, RMB uh, crypto, RMB stable coin. Definitely is not when when definitely mm-hmm. is not going anywhere. Um, but then the maker community learned that you know Ruin was part of that community and learned that and moved to decentralized ecosystem uh, Ethereum and make that that work. Yeah, I think we are in that process of consumer crypto or hmm. or non financial social network. We are just still experimenting. It's more important to be open minded. Yeah. Right, right. So I guess I, I imagine what this implies. If like I, I generally agree, like we like the crypto world has this like I think almost desperate need to go into non financial applications uh, and use cases, just because I think there's. I think everybody just sees kind of like the limits of that. Um, but that, that does imply that we are going to encroach more and more onto what, you know, we would all consider Web2, the, the space of Web2 platforms and like the the, the things that they do. Um, how do you think Web2 platforms will, will react to that? I think they, they're going to definitely do their best to stop, stop you know, Web3, and they, they have many vehicles to do that. Um, so no, for now, honestly, Web3 social network or Web3 consumer crypto network, it's too small to to bother the, the Web3, Web2 giants. But, you know, like a small example, mm. AppLock. AppLock, it's a simple app. It's an extension. There's no fancy technology. Just like match the URL and match the HTML. If you find a, an HTML contains some ads, just delete it and remove it. It it creates some mm. problem for Google, right? For the ads revenue, and they have a lot of problem with the publishers, like right. mostly the, the the U.S. publisher, like Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and also the European publisher. They don't like it either. You know, they don't like Google, but they don't like AppLock either, because that's the way they can get the ads revenue. Mm. Um, combined together, um, there's some time. I think if I remember correctly, there's certain time a few years ago, like Google was trying to change the Chromium. Um, you know, code base, Chromium, uh, which is open source. Again, they control the open source standard because they, they, they have this thing as a standard. They don't make money, but they, this is a standard. And they try to make it less user friendly for AppLock to survive. And, and I think I'm, I'm afraid the same thing mm-hmm. can happen for crypto, you know, Web things like MetaMask, and you, you already we already saw the the, the SEC, uh, you know, pointing against consensus for MetaMask. Mm. Um, but we are we are here to stay because we are like again long term, and then we always we also realize that you know like uh, there's also like old standard committee you have to play play a role in. We become part of the uh, ECMA TC thirty nine, which is the standard committee for JavaScript. We're we're we've been there for like four years now. We try to say, hey, okay, maybe we just you know try to change some standard for JavaScript because JavaScript right now is pretty dangerous. There's no um, sandbox, and there's mm-hmm. some people doing yeah. the sandbox called Secure ECMAScript. They also be part of the TC39. We we'll try to support these guys. Say, hey, we can just create more better standard. Uh, my latest theory, my latest feeling like, is Ethereum Foundation is the new. World Wide Web Consortium, right? When the World Wide Web Consortium started, Tim Berners-Lee <laughs> was, he's a cent. He didn't take any, you know, um, amount of money. He just, he's still like, he's still living a decent life, but he's not really like billionaire, whatever, like Bill Gates, you know, or, or Mark mm-hmm. Anderson. He's the inventor. And I think, I think, uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I agree like Vitalik. I, I feel the same for him. Um, you know, I didn't have a chance to email Satoshi, so I don't really have too much personal feeling, but at the time I have a lot of respect to him. But just like how mm-hmm. the World Wide Web Consortium and ECMA and all these standard committee was now 
controlled, largely influenced and controlled by Google, Apple, you know, Tencent, Facebook. I, I'm mm. afraid that like one day, same foundation or the other like foundations will be will be largely influenced by that. And I think that's not going to be solved by one mm. um, philosopher king like Vitalik. And, and, and we need to have backup plans. Mm-hmm. And we are doing backup plans. We are just allocating what we have, which we which, which we have is it's quite limited. You know, we're 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 in some sense resourceful, but compared to them, we're you know quite uh, limited resources. But we're allocating what we can to just prevent yeah. this from happening. Make sure now we're sure that we are not on the wrong side. Just creating more siloed communities. Yeah, we need to be more open minded. That's that's what we're mm-hmm. trying to do. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, because they are the existing kind of like major powers or players or institutions in that space. Um, they also have the seat at the table in governments, in these inst- standard creating bodies and such that they can use to influence, as they already do, to be honest, um, to influence what they what they would like to influence. Um, but speaking about influence, I was actually really interested um about, I guess, your thoughts on uh, how the approach that you guys are taking, because the company is, um, I mean, I know like, like mm-hmm. you are from China. Um, I'm just curious, what types of influences from that background do you think um, yeah, influences your way of thinking about, about Mask and, and the things that you guys are, are building out? Yeah. Um, um, previously, actually, I had, I had on... Um, yeah, I had someone from from Mask uh, 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 end of last year where we talked a lot about mm-hmm, China. But mm-hmm, curious, mm-hmm. your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you know, like um, it will be it will be great for uh, any young founder that from the West that really live in the in the East for a few years and speak some language like like Vitalik or like Satoshi. I don't know. He, he mm-hmm. definitely speaks some Japanese, right? And and probably not Japanese, <laughs> but you definitely speak Japanese in some way. And it's going to be very helpful because you understand how it works and how society works in different ways. It may, it may look the same, but yeah. it's very different internal and inside. And the core is going to be far different from each other. But still, it's all humankind. It's all like, you know, um, society and it's all politics and all, you know, money stuff. You need to spend some time to learn that. So I was... You know, I was born in China, so I was spending like my teenager, some of my teenagers in the state, and then moved to Japan when I was like early twenty, and Singapore, um, many other countries as a nomad. But on the other side, I I don't think uh, a lot of those um, super hot and top tier Westerner projects they ever they ever have chance to do that, um, and they better do it earlier. Mm. Um, as a young, like as a young kid. Um, otherwise you always have like a fantasy of how the other part of the world look like, you know, like you're going to only, re- you're going to only mm-hmm. realize career as part of the kimchi place. You can pump the token and realize the Chinese people have a lot of like people playing <laughs> money machine. No, it's not. Um, you have to, yeah. you know, you have to, cause, cause if, if the whole ideology, if the whole, I think this is my opinion, uh, but I, I share this opinion with many other industry OGs. I think this, the very reason this industry exists, the very reason this decentralized uh, industry exists is we need to establish independent cyberspace. You know, it's a little bit different from network state. It might not be a state at war, but in order to have a state, you need to have a space that is independent, just like the American uh, North American continent it should be independent from the British colonized state, right? That's that's the end, that's one of the end goal of our industry to create the internet, the separate internet state, create an independent space. If you want to create independent space um, in a separate space, you need to figure out where is the weak spot, where is the part that the government have less control, or where is the part that government has a lot of control, a lot of influence. Certainly, you need to find the answer, you know, in both the U.S. and China. And maybe the answer is not in there, but the answer is relative to these places. Um, that's what I'm trying to do, like, as a young kid. 
as a journalist, I was like wondering, oh, what's going on in the state? It was like 2016 election, right? I was I was there, and I was like wondering what's going on, and 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 then and then when trying to change the constitution, I was there as well. So look into that and figure out that where's the weak spot, right? And then you figure out this weak weak, weak spot, and you create some things that are able to penetrate this weak spot, and eventually leads to the independence of the cyberspace, right? Like maybe financial network is the weak spot. Because most of people in the world want to hold US dollar, but they don't have a bank account. So yeah, you know, decentralized gold, decentralized finance. They want to have nice interest rate, but they don't trust local bank. That's a weak spot. Maybe they want to invest in some fancy project, but they cannot invest in the US stock market. So that's why people invest on chain. Maybe they want to fully unregulated stuff. That's why they want to do meme. Um, but these are the weak spot of the offline society of the government. And in order to find this weak spot, you need to travel a lot and be a nomad. And uh, not really sit in your valley office and just stick into the user numbers. That is that is wrong. That's not gonna give you any anything meaningful, right? That's that's what I'm feeling, yeah. For for China and for the West or the US. Because I've been living in both countries and then I'm exploring other um, other countries as well. And I think that's very important that, that that it will solve a lot of problems. It will solve a lot of questions. You don't you won't ask questions like why people still use Tron because yeah, well, there's still people in Africa using that every day. Don't care about decentralization or right. You need to be there. You need to talk to these people. Yeah, and then you just mm. you think about okay, um, like China is China's like social networks definitely have a lot of problems with the censorship why these people are not moving to decentralized social network yet. And then you realize, uh, how can they deposit a gas fee if there's no, if there's no local exchange, right? There's more offshore exchange built by Chinese founder, mm-hmm. but there will be no local exchange. If you charge people gas fee, how can you let them use them, right? Use these social networks. That's why the most mm-hmm. widely used decentralized social network by the Chinese actually maps down. There's several community and they've been cracked down several times. Mm. Yeah. And then you look into the thread, right? They're, they're forking mm. maps down. They're compatible, try to compatible with Fediverse. If you really lose that and really not to talk to people, to the users, you realize actually there's a lot of Taiwanese people using thread and there's a lot of Korean people using thread and there's a reason, right? And you need to figure out what is the reason and to build your own social protocols or your own bridge between one, two and group three. So that's, I think, the thing, Mask team, core team, and me, and the other, like, uh, our advisor and our community is doing very well. Because we are, we are here to study. We're here to really look into people's eyes to figure out what is the problem and what is things about stop you to using that. And, and I think uh, I'm, 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 I'm kind of certain to say that most of other projects, they're stuck in the ideology wars. They never talk to the real people. Yeah. So mm. that's, I think that's our advantage and that's why I love your podcast as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm curious. Um, yeah. Is, is there in China, um, is there uh, some sort of official stance against uh, protocols like Mastodon? Oh, it's not against, but if you want to open, I think the thing will come to the U S because like, uh, I remember there's several quotes from Julia sound that there's a, you know, dangerous, Slippery, a dangerous uh, slippage that the country is going to copy paste each other's. And the U.S. is definitely looking to China. China is looking to the U.S. Um, and Australia has already banned, I think, if I remember correctly, Australia banned a lot of those cryptographic uh, technologies. Um, people are going to follow. Um, say in China, mm-hmm. in mainland China, there's no thing that ban running maps down, but there's law require you to KYC the maintainer of the maps down service. Right, uh, and which which I think the American mm-hmm. is copying as KYC every wallet. And if you're the maintainer of a Mastodon service, and there's some shit happening on your service, you'll be the one responsible for the content. Which I think there's uh, there's argument about the you know like the uh, the argument about the fiction two seven zero right. Uh, that's the that's the like uh, infra providers whether they need to be responsible for the content, 
yeah, there's a lot of arguments, and that's that's the official way. It's not saying, oh, if you dare to post anything decentralized, you're gone. No, it's just by KYC and KYB the maintainer, and then that's that's the way it, it gradually cracked down those who want to create a decentralized social network. That's my feeling, um, and and I, 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 I was I was like very careful. Um, look into what's going on in decentralized social network. I'm afraid that lots of these alternative decentralized social network, they didn't understand the key of censorship resistance, right? If you only allow certain white label maintainer of run your nodes or your one your apps or you want run your instance, like the RPC nodes, they were, were, were some certain social network, they run your apps. If you only allow like white label guys to run it, you end up to have this problem. And, and, and basically, Chinese government have the playbook for whoever wants to censor to copy. Hey guys, unfortunately, the like last few minutes of my recording, the audio went out for whatever reason. It didn't record my audio. So I'm just uh, jumping in right here just to try to remember again what exactly I was talking to Suji about um, since we lost that bit of audio. But if I were to recall correctly, I believe I was talking to him about the importance of decentralized technology, especially in the context of activism and geopolitics and kind of the missing piece that sometimes people who are involved in activism kind of miss out when it comes to decentralized tech and having this censorship resistance as being important uh, to that. So I believe I was talking about uh, something along those lines and that's what led to uh, Suji's next answer. One one activist like group I was involved like it was the ninety six ICU movement is around twenty nineteen that um, it's a group of Chinese like not really Chinese like um, Asian but many Chinese uh, including overseas Chinese like tech worker they were like protesting against a super long working schedule and also uh, they they probably don't receive the compensation for it overtime and which is a which is a phenomenon. Uh, uh, it's really bad thing happened in the Asian country, right? And and they protest on the GitHub. I think what GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft at that time, did is like they try to make things survive. They try to say, hey, uh, we are not really friends with these governments. We try to make you survive. And but they didn't expect that people were going to use GitHub as a way to protest. Um, and this thing, this 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 ripple called nine six nine. You remember correctly? This is the largest. The Ripple with the largest like group of fork or uh, the largest number of like star uh, ever existed in such a short time of period, and there's uh, there's a program run by GitHub is to put every code base in Atlantic, and then they actually include that thing. <laughs> so in in few hundred years, when the historic you know when when the when the f- when the future like you know twenty fourth century historian is trying to look into the history, they're gonna figure out this. Very interesting stuff, but they, this movement stuck when people tried to donate money because most of the donation, most of the transaction is KYC in most of the countries, no matter you're like overseas Chinese or whatever. And believe it or not, I don't think like Visa are going to keep the secret if they do that Visa card. I don't think that's going to keep a secret. They try to like they try to bow down, say, "Hey, can we enter the Chinese market?" Uh, if you look into again, if you look into Japan. Uh, there's local provider GCB, but Visa took like the the large majority of the share because they they do know how to play as a as a good boy to the governments, and they haven't achieved that in China. Doesn't mean they're not going to copy paste the same idea. They're going to be the good boy. So yeah, there's nothing safe. And I was against I was against uh, the other members say we should set up donation. I think no, unless you want to accept crypto. Otherwise, I don't think there's a really safe way of donation. Um, and without proper funding, that thing didn't continue very well. Uh, and the Microsoft community, Microsoft uh, employees, very interestingly, Microsoft employees also created a repo that is like Microsoft Worker for Good um, for support this uh, movement. Say people just you know tell the Microsoft executive that we should not remove this report from uh, GitHub. Um, it works <laughs> and, and very fun. That's something I, I participated. And and it's not on the, any decentralized social network. But again, Git, the protocol of GitHub, Git, it's decentralized because people can fork it. And even GitHub remove it, you can just fork it on your laptop and you know upload it again. You can have the timestamp, which is not on blockchain, but you can have some similar stuff. But I do think it will be a lot of like 
activist uh, activism activities were going to happen in, in blockchain through the DAO. But in order to have that, you need to have a public forum that people can discuss, right? And and if you don't have that, you probably still rely on Telegram because it's still kind of reliable. Uh, if you're hardcore, you probably seek no, but again, we need to learn and respect these guys and try to integrate them. Not say we completely build something that ignore the existence of these things. Yeah. Also, of course, lost this little bit of the audio as well. Um, but for my last question, it was simply asking Suji where people could um, contribute to Mass Network, the various things that they're building, and where can people learn more? Yeah, if you're a developer, definitely take a look up at web3.bio or api.web3.bio and, or, or NextID. And there's a lot of like open source free uh, developer tools that you can look at someone and you can see someone that then is aggregating together. If you're like a consumer or like audience, you want to learn more about social network, decentralized social network, you don't want to download like 10 apps, I would recommend firefly.social. It have like web page and mobile app or Android and iPhone. You can use your Twitter, like for caster lens, whatever. And we're going to support all the major social network in one and to connect them together. Eventually your social graph can merge into one, not including Twitter. But it will be a long term, long term play. So that's, I think, if you're an interesting social network, definitely have a try. Yeah.